Hi, my name is Uli. I'm a guide with the Parameter Heritage and Visitor Information Centre and I represent Parameter Park. Our story begins in the late 1780s in Kentispear, Devon, where George Salter worked on a farm. Things on the land must have been tough because George joined a group of smugglers selling stolen goods. Trying to get away from the excise man, which was a combination of policemen and uh, tax collectors, the group got caught in a terrible affray whereby two excise men were killed. The smugglers were caught, they were tried and sentenced to hang. George Salter's sentence was commuted to transportation to the new colony of New South Wales. George was imprisoned on the hulk, the Dunkirk, awaiting his transportation, where he learned that his wife had passed away. But things were even getting worse for George. He was to embark on the ill-fated Neptune, also known as the Death Ship, because of the inhumane treatment of her convict cargo. George survived the perilous journey and arrived in Sydney in 1790. At last, George's luck improved. He served out his sentence and once he was a free man, he applied for a land grant. In 1796, Governor Hunter allowed him land along the fertile Parramatta River and he put it to good use. Within a few years, with the help of his female companion, Winifred Marsh, and three convict servants, he built a two bedroom simple cottage. These two bedrooms form the centre rooms of the dairy cottage, which was later extended. This tiny room was George and Winifred's kitchen and living area. The fireplace was used for cooking and heating. Local timbers were sourced for window frames, floorboards, but also roofing shingles. The bricks were made locally by convicts. George must have been doing well in order to afford the bricks as the normal building method was either wattle and daub or timber slab. Here in the bedroom, the lace and blaster construction of the interior walls can be seen. If George built any of this himself, or if he relied on his convict servants, is unknown. What we do know is that there was already a skilled labour force available in Parramatta. Early on, George and Winifred would have trod a path down to the river, collecting water for cooking, drinking and washing. Later on, they sunk a well next door, which is now hidden from view by the ranger's cottage. George was an enterprising farmer. He had 10 acres of wheat and 20 acres of maize under cultivation by 1800. Within five years, he had established himself in the district. He was trading in wheat. He was owning a pig and a horse. Horse ownership was a rarity in the colony and a sure sign of prosperity. In 1803, George appeared in court, demanding payment from a ship's captain and a merchant. The captain loaded the grain during wet weather. The grain got wet, it was unusable. It must have taken an enormous amount of courage and defiance for George to voluntarily reappear in the court as an ex-convict. However, we know he was able to defend himself because he won the case. His Irish partner, Winifred Marsh, was tried in Dublin in 1791 and arrived in the colony on the Royal Admiral in 1792. Like George, Winifred must have been a hard worker for their farm to do so well. Women in the colony, whether convict or free settler, were at the mercy of a male-dominated system and their safety always uncertain. For Winifred, George Salter would have represented male protection, the farm a home with stable food supply. Besides helping build the cottage, Winifred would have tended to her household chores, but also worked on the farm. The last record of Winifred is in the 1814 muster of Parramatta, where she appears to be living alone. George, on the other hand, showing some entrepreneurial flair, sold his property to Governor Macquarie in 1813. 
He then accepts 30 head of cattle as payment for his land and starts a new life moving to Tasmania where he secured a land grant along the river Styx and starts cattle farming. By 1819, George's holdings were 260 acres of land, 13 under crops, the rest under pasture. He owned a horse, 400 cattle, 80 sheep, and he employed nine convict servants. Why didn't Winifred share George's prosperity? Perhaps she feared going to such a remote place as Tasmania, where only the worst of the male convicts were sent to. Or perhaps George's drinking started to give problems to the couple. After his arrival in Tasmania, George took up the position as superintendent of government herds. Due to his drinking, he came to the attention of the governor and was finally forced to resign his position, moving to Hobart, where he died in 1832. Throughout his life, George showed an enormous amount of initiative and ambition to overcome immense hardships and challenges and to finally prosper in a way that would not have been an option for him in England. His story highlights the importance of opportunity which was there for the taking by anyone who arrived in the colony. George and Winifred's humble cottage represents hard work and the importance of opportunity. Today the cottages, together with Old Government House and Parramatta Park, are one of 11 Australian convict sites which are inscribed in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Wouldn't George and Winifred be astounded? <laughs>